Hello there, nice to see you. Thank you for joining me for another fabulous episode. Today we are looking at a Strandberg Bowden Plus NX6. This is a headless guitar in copper tone finish. Very cool, no holds bar, all the frills. So Ricky, when you're ready, let's do it. In terms of the specifications, they are very, very high on this. What kind of specifications are they here, you say? So it's got a chambered older body with a book matched flame maple top. This is the copper tone finish. We've got their patented true temperament fretting system. What does that mean? It means that the frets go like this, wiggly, 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 all up and down the neck. They claim that this makes that every single note every single note wherever you are on the fret is perfectly in tune so these are kind of like micro increments micro intonation adjustments that they claim makes your guitar perfectly in tune had a little play on it it plays really really nicely we've got some issues with it we've got a bit of an overbow on it and everything like that so won't be able to sort of see exactly how that feels until the end of this video but we can talk about more specs so we've got a tapered scale on this so we've got a 25 and a half inch scale at the bottom end of the guitar and we've got a 25.0 at the top end of the guitar so from the thick end down to the thin end it progresses slightly shorter from 25 and a half to 25 Again, this helps with intonation, this helps with playability, making your hand feel a little bit more ergonomic, a little bit more comfortable. This isn't a thing for aesthetic, it's all about keeping that guitar perfectly in tune. We've got a carbon fiber reinforced roasted maple neck, really high specs on this. Obviously we have no headstock, so the machine heads are at this side. These are the Stratton Strandberg patented tuning system. So again, nice sort of fine increments you can make with these down at the bottom end. So rather Rather than um, having your wines at the top, we pull it through, lock it down here with these little Allen head screws. Electronics wise, we've got two Strandberg pickups, two humbuckers in five different configurations. Seven and the eight string version of these come with Fishman Fluence pickups with push pull pots. Uh, this is just a master volume, master tone, five way selector. Really, really, really cool guitar. We're going to take this apart. It's in. It's a 2022 edition, so shouldn't be too much that needs doing we need to put a bit rec neck relief in there however we've got nine gauge strings on this at the moment we are going to be upgrading that to 10 so maybe the uh, little bit of extra tension that we're going to put on from those thicker strings might pull that out if not we might just have to loosen the truss rod off a little bit we'll check all the intonation the intonation is really cool on these you can adjust it here and these little um saddles here with the where the string sits on top of and uh, that actually screws up and down so you can adjust the height of each individual string which is always an awesome thing to do and then in terms of the radius uh, we've got a 16 to 20 inch compound radius on that so again what does that mean it means that at the top of the guitar here we're going to start at a 16 inch and at the bottom we're going to finish at a 20 inch the higher the number the flatter the radius so we're going to have a slightly steeper curve there than we are at the bottom it's going to get gradually flatter as we get to here so this is just going to be a basic setup bit of cleaning bit of messing about polishing up the frets doing all the usual stuff we're going to have some fun cutting the masking tape around these little bits so truss rods all good the neck is adjustable tuners are in good working order as i said it's a 2022 edition so you know shouldn't really be needing much stuff just a bit of tightening a bit of cleaning maybe sort of the intonation i had a little play on it early and it's a little bit sharp uh, i noticed on pretty much all the strings but as i said the tuner's in good working order the nut on here we have got a nut and this is also what's called a zero fret so that's uh, fret one is here this would technically be fret zero it just gives the string a little sort of prop up just to sit on like that it's almost like a little mini saddle of its own that just sits there so it keeps it nice keeps that action nice and low graphite nut i believe on these as well so it certainly looks like one Nuts in good working order, frets are in good working order. Output jack is working fine. Quite cool on these, it's sort of tucked away underneath here. If you can see that there. Yeah, so if we just look here. And also, this is really cool, comes with a little magnetic, little Strandberg magnetic tool. Very cool little bit of kit. It's got all the bits and pieces that you need on there. 
tools then. Like I say, it comes with that handy little tool, so you don't actually need very many things for this. Just my usual nut wrenches. We've got some crescent snips. This is my new, finally buckled and uh, brought myself a little stumac. This is a really cool little bit of kit. Comes with basically every little sort of mini, mini sort of thumbnail and screw size that you'd ever need on a guitar, all in one handy little box. These are available from Stumac. I'll drop a link below. The rest of the tools, just got my little Waverly string winder. And believe it or not, that's pretty much all we're going to be needing today, other than some cleaning products and stuff like that once again thanks to everyone almost 200 subscribers now we're at hopefully it'll be more by the time the uh, this video has been released but getting some really nice feedback on the videos and it's kind of definitely giving me motivation to keep going and doing more and more of them you guys have been asking about doing sort of refrets and fret leveling and changing pickups and stuff like that so the way this works is you know i only kind of record stuff as the work comes in so you know you just kind of get what i get in the shop so this will be the first headless guitar that we've worked on so that's going to be pretty cool so we're just going to start by removing the strings i'm just going to loosen off at this end just get them sort of roughly loosened off it's quite dirty this guitar as well so it does does just need a really good clean up now i'm going to cut the strings at this point and we're also just going to remove I'll just use this little Strandberg tool actually. These strings go through as well, which is really nice, really good for resonance purposes in terms of kind of keeping that vibration of the string solidly to the guitar. It goes right through the saddle, so you're kind of getting like the maximum amount of reson resonance from your string. Quick slurp on me, bro. So let's check out this little tool. What we got on here? We've got a couple of different Allen heads. I'm assuming that's a truss rod adjustment. What's this little guy for? Oh, that's very cool. Look at that. So that's actually for lifting the saddle up and down, which is really cool. Really nice little design. I've never really looked at these before, but yeah, really, really cool. You can tell, you know, years and years and years of, of engineering, arguably over engineering has gone into making this guitar, but anything that comes with a free tool built in, you know what I mean? is a winner so we'll just loosen these off really nice sort of stringing system on this it's kind of impossible to mess it up really it's just nice and simple which is really good simple is always the best thing I just to remind you as well, if you've uh, this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, these inspection sheets, this guitar service certificate that we've got right here, it's available to download off my website completely for free, no catches. If you want to pop your email in as well, and you can, you want to be added to the mailing list, that's that's awesome. But you don't have to do that. You can just download it, print it yourself, and work along. Been seeing some people uh, actually. I got sent a picture of a guy who was working on his guitar, and he had sort of my video on in the background, and was really touched by that. Really glad that some people are getting uh, some getting get some use out of this listening to me waffle on about stuff we'll just do what we normally do then just kind of give it a quick initial clean down using my matte finish music nomad cleaner I'm not going to go too crazy on this just a tiny little bit a little bit on the neck and just a general clean down using a different cloth actually chrome pickups on this as well so nice sort of mirror finish the hardest one to sort of keep nice and clean and shiny just give that a little bit of a buff now as I said this guitar is virtually brand new and to be honest these frets are absolutely polished to perfection so I can't see really any benefit in polishing these up today now i know what you're thinking he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want to cut around all them and you'd be right but however if i thought there'd be a benefit to polishing the frets on this i'd be doing it but to be honest they're absolutely gleaming they've got lovely tangs on the end as well nice sort of smoothed off you can tell a, a lot of sort of um a lot of human interaction has gone into this and what i mean by that is that you know this hasn't just come out of a a factory bolted together and sort of thrown in a box you can tell quite a lot of love's gone into this guitar so to be honest at this stage i'm going to leave the frets as they are 
Now this is not particularly porous wood at all, but I think probably benefit from just having a little bit of lemon oil on there. So we'll just give it a quick drizzle on the neck, quick drizzle. Dunlop Lemon 75. Again, everything I use, all my tools, all my bits and pieces, I hope anyway, uh, are in the uh, video description. So you can link straight through there. And if you do happen to buy something, get a little bit of a kickback on that as well. So I don't know, I think it's about 20p on Amazon or something like that, but it all counts towards obviously doing all these videos for free. So anything we can do to sort of, uh, every little helps as they say. So we'll just leave the oil, the excess oil on there just to soak in a little bit. In the meantime, we're just gonna clean out these electronics. So first thing I'm gonna do is just clean up the switch. This is the WD-40 contact cleaner, really good stuff. Bit of a spray in there. This is an essential thing, not necessarily this brand, but having a bottle of contact cleaner in your case or in your little toolbox, especially if you're on tour, especially if you, you sweat quite a lot, got sweat sort of dripping into those places. You really want to um, have some of this contact cleaner in. It's, it, it solves so many problems and it also prevents them as well. So keeping it, keeping the, uh, the inside, the contacts in these switches, inside the pots, inside the output jack, keeping them clean is really important so it's not kind of scratching and moving around. So we've got these custom little Strandberg knobs on here as well, really nice little details on this. You can tell just by the way that the pots are moving, you can feel that they're really good quality. I'm just gonna keep using the tool that they've provided, I think, because why not? It's worth making a note when you're taking these off, just kind of where they're set. Now it's got this little flat edge there, which marks the all the way on mark. So we'll make sure that we line them up properly when we put these back on. And all we're doing now is just checking that the screw underneath the here, the one that's sort of holding the pot in place is doing its job. It's nice and tight. So we're just gonna have a feel on this. So this is a solid shaft pot. You can either get a, a split shaft or a solid shaft. Personally, I prefer a solid one just because they are more solid. A little bit of a tighten on there. As I've said in previous videos, you don't want to over tighten these. Now that is quite loose at the moment. So rather than just turning it and turning it and risking snapping the wires on the pot under there, we'll just loosen these off and then I'll open up the back so we can actually hold the pot from the back while we're doing it. And it'll prevent any wires getting snapped off. I'm just going to switch to my own little tools here because we're running the risk of scratching the guitar with using that. So I'll just uh, use my little stew mat guy. So they're off. Let's just get rid of this excess lemon oil. Wonder what we'll find under here then. First time opening one of these up. Never really appealed to me personally, these types of guitars, but you know, I'm always up for trying something new. So nice, so again, talking about quality, this is a metal plate rather than just a, sort of a cheap plastic one. We've got foil lining inside there, looks like CTS pots. Like I said, no holds barred. This is a really nice bit of kit. Got a stereo jack on here, just wired in, uh, in mono, attached to the plate as well. So while this is opened up, we'll just make sure that this output jack's nice and tight, which it is. Give it a bit of spray out with contact cleaner. Okay, so as I mentioned before, these pots are feeling a little bit loosey-goosey. So I'm just going to hold the pot as I adjust it, so that's nice. Again, with pots, you don't want to over-tighten them. I know I kind of say that about most things, but especially pots, you don't want to over-tighten these because if you tighten them up too much, you can pull the metal casing inside and it can actually short the circuit out. So you can effectively tighten it too much so that it just doesn't work anymore. If that happens, just loosen it slightly off and it should, should start working again. So they're lovely and tight now. Just gonna spray a bit of uh, WD-40 in here as well. We've got some resistors and caps wired onto these pots as well. So we've got some you know, nice sort of selective voicing options on here. 
which is really cool. As I said, the more I look into this guitar, it's you know it's it's very well thought out. Just the curvature of this input here as well, so you can put it on your lap and it's not going to dig in your thigh. Really nice little design. And that's it. We've cleaned out those pots, cleared the inside of them. So we'll just tighten all this back up. Now with this being a bolt on neck, just it's always good practice as well, just to make sure that the bolts on the neck are tight. Because if they're not, obviously that could cause you some problems down the road. I suspect there will be. But while it's here, while we've got it all up, we might as well have a look here. Wonderful. So they're all lovely and tight. We'll just check our strap locks while we're here as well. Again, just such a little detail, but just having that flat edge on the pot there, just never seen that before, but it makes sense. It just makes it easier to, to turn it on and off. So we've cleaned out the switch, we've cleaned the pots, we've cleaned the output jack, we've tightened everything up. We checked the pickups earlier, they're all working fine. So, do you know what? I think this is ready to put the strings back on. I told you it'd be quick and easy, didn't I? But this is the thing, with, with guitars that are built well, with good parts, in theory, should take a lot less work. Half of the time when you've got a guitar that's a mare and it's falling apart, it's usually when the hardware's knackered or the screws are rusted shut or or whatever it's time to get some strings on so as i said we're going to be doing uh, what we got ernie ball regular slinkies tried and true does exactly what this says on the tin lasts a good amount of time really good value my old guitar teacher taught me ernie ball used to do a don't i don't think they still do it but they used to do a um a beginners and an intermediate guitar learning book and uh, there's a thing in there that said Ernie Ball guitars do all effects which is a really good way of remembering Ernie Ball guitars do all effects i.e. E B G D A D nice way of remembering your strings for tuning I'm full of useful stroke useless information like that so then, how do we string this up? Like I said, being really honest, I've never done one of these before, so we're learning together. String's gonna go through the hole here. Nice and steady, pulling through. We don't need to worry about pulling back or winding around anything. You literally just pull it to tension. And we're gonna tighten up with this handy little Strandberg tool as included. Nice little clip. Nice clean cut here with the Lindstrom snips. And that's it, job done. What we're gonna do now is tune the guitar up to pitch. Wow, look at this. So, also with this tool, I didn't realise, you could put it in the end and turn it there. I mean, what an amazing... This is really fucking cool, man. Sorry to cuss. But this is really cool. They've thought of everything, man. They've thought of absolutely everything. Cool, so we are tuned up to pitch, E standard. So let's just have a look at what the next saying. So yes, yeah, so we've still got a slight over, over bow on there, so I'm gonna struggle to show you this with the cameras that I've got, but essentially at the moment, the wood here is bowing that way. It's coming up and into the string, and there's a bit more, so that means that the, the neck is a bit too tense, and what we need to do is just release some relief just to bring that wood down there. So, wouldn't it be great if this fits the truss rod as well? It doesn't, you can't be too, you, I thought that'd be too lucky that. So, let's get one of my little stew mat guys in here. A bit smaller. There we go, fits perfect. So I tend to do this sort of stood up looking down at the guitar
it was really, really, really tense. I don't know if this guitar's had super thick strings on it at some point, but it uh, really needed a lot of relief there. We've had to do almost half a half a full turn. Let's just get it into playing position. So all that sort of um, horrible buzzing that were going on before with the wood pushing up. <laughs> quite happy with the action here so it's going to pop my radius gauge on here so as i said before it's a compound radius 16 to 20 so we're going to probably look around 20 here sorry around 16 generally if you've got a compound radius i'd kind of start with the lowest number and kind of use that as your guide as opposed to the other way around so we'll go for 16 this is a great crimson guitars radius gauge it's got four different sizes and it comes in two formats this has got a, what is it, 14, 15, 16, and 20 inch scale on it. Just gonna remove the output jack. That's the only thing so far that's annoyed me is when you plug it in, it just kind of sits the guitar up like that. If you put a right angle jack in it, it'd probably sort that out. That's the only thing I don't like about it, but just need to make a little height adjustment on this saddle here. It's just a little bit too low. So we're just gonna pull it off and using this awesome little gadget, we're literally just gonna screw it round and that's just gonna raise that saddle up. Now I'd say that's a bit too high now. So we'll split the difference and just go half back. That looks great. So we'll just check that we've got a nice smooth 16 inch. Perfect. If anything as well, this G-string just needs to come up just a tiny amount. And all these adjustments are doing is essentially I'm just kind of matching the curvature here, the way that the strings sort of curve at this position here influences how it curves there and round the radius. And you want the radius at the string at the bridge end to be the exact same as the radius on the neck. You get a nice even playability all the way up and down. So, happy with the action then. Let's look at now doing the intonation. So, I'm gonna take my gloves off at this point because I hate playing guitar with gloves on. So, in terms of adjusting the intonation, we're gonna be using these screws in here, underneath there. And essentially, this whole piece will move back and forward depending what we want. Now, coming out the factory, I'm sure this is extraordinarily close to what it needs to be but just in case it's not we'll have a setup so we always want to be adjusting intonation in playing position so just play the string open and on the 12th if you've not used the peterson tuner before when then when the when the strobes are going this way it means it's sharp when they're going this way it's flat the aim of the game is to get it so it doesn't move at all. So that's a bit sharp, a bit flat, in tune. Hope that makes sense. So open E on the 12th, open E on the 12th, little bit sharp. So we're just going to loosen off the machine head. If it's sharp, the string wants to go this way. If it's flat, it wants to go that way. If it's sharp, you want to lengthen the string. If it's flat, you want to shorten the string. So we'll get our little truss rod adjustment here. You can loosen that off. And we're just gonna pull it back. Just gonna loosen that off a bit more. Always tune up to the note as well. Don't wanna tune down to it, always tune up to the note. Perfect. Perfect. 
So let's check this micro adjustment out then, this, um, what do we call it, true temperament fretting system. So I'm just going to go across each note all the way up and down and we'll see where we are. Now in my experience, the intonation is at its worst, I would say, right at the bottom. So, the, you know, sort of between where the nut slot is and the first fret tends to be where your sort of biggest gap is when you're pressing down. So typically, on especially if you're putting really thick strings on the guitar, it's sometimes very difficult to get the intonation perfect on the first fret, but we'll see how it is. So that looks good. E, first fret for F. It's pretty good, F sharp. I'll tell you what we'll do before we do those micro adjustments, actually, we'll just stretch the strings, get them so that they're really nice and firm and in position, and then we'll, um, We'll do the little intonation test after that. So just tune to pitch. I'm going to mute it for this because you don't really want to hear these noises. But So stretch up. Then I'm going to put my thumbs like this and my fingers. Fingers are going to push that way. Thumbs are going to push that way. I'm just going to do that several times up and down the string. Play it open, up to pitch. And you're going to do this probably about three or four times. The other good thing about this uh, tuning system as well is because you've not got winds going around a machine head, there's no slack really to pull through. The slack's kind of already pulled through there, so you don't really need to stretch these that, that much. Okay, so we're in tune. I'm starting to fall in love with this guitar a bit, I can't believe it. A little bit sharp on the G there. A little flat on the G sharp. A little sharp on the G. Perfect A. Perfect A sharp. So arguably, I wouldn't say that it is completely perfect. A couple of them are just a tiny little bit flat, tiny little bit sharp, but in the mix, in a recording, you're not going to hear it. And it's still, I would say, it's definitely notice noticeably better than a sort of a standard non sort of tempered fretting system. Is it something you need? I don't know. It's like an Apple Watch and it's a nice thing to have, but you don't really need it. With this, I'd say it's a nice thing to have, but I can't really say it's essential, to be honest. In terms of the over-engineering that's gone into this, it's just unbelievable. They've thought of literally absolutely everything. So we're just going to check that the volume of the bridge pickup matches that of the neck. <laughs> Bridge, neck, perfect height on them. I didn't expect anything else to be honest, everything else on this guitar has been absolutely tip top so pickup heights are, don't need normalising because they're already, already normalised. Strap pins have been tightened up and we are just about there. So thanks for joining me again. Again, if you want to download one of these certificates from my website, drguitars.co.uk, you can book your guitar in there as well. Loads of appointments between now, September 2023, until the end of December 2023. This customer is going to come and pick this up shortly. I'm going to give him a copy of this. I'm going to fill the rest of the information out. This comes with every guitar setup as well. So it's got a valuation on here. You can use this for insurance purposes, uh, as well as just kind of documenting the guitar for, you know, your own records and insurance purposes. So this has been a 2022 Strandberg Bowden Plus NX6 in copper tone finish. Absolutely wonderful guitar. Really, really happy. Love the way it plays. It's not really needing much stuff, just a nice sort of clean setup, some tightening, some cleaning and all that kind of stuff. So thanks very much. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like the video, it all really helps the algorithm of life. Really appreciate it. More piping hot content coming very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. How's the guitar feeling, Axel? Wonderful. Buzzing, Wonderful. loving it. Buzzing. What's this thing called? It's a one wheel. Future one wheel. One wheel. Go on yeah, then, man. show us. And they, what, do you say they still steel toe cap crocs as well? Yeah, man. Look at this. <laughs>
All right, see you later, mate. You later, Safe riding. Safe. <laughs> what an absolute fruitcake. See you, pal. Go steady.